This Good To Go segment is sponsored by Spectrum Health Medical Group. There is so much joy in a new birth, unless as a new mom, you're not able to fully experience it. You suffer with postpartum depression. Well, May is both Mental Health Awareness Month and Women's Health Month, and we want to talk about perinatal mood and anxiety disorder, what we know as postpartum depression. With COVID-19 affecting many aspects of new motherhood, the numbers for postpartum depression have increased. And here to tell us more is Nancy Roberts. She is Program Coordinator of the Postpartum Emotional Support Program at Spectrum Health. And it's good to have you, Nancy. Thank you for having me this morning, Catherine. How common is postpartum depression and why does it happen to some women? That's a great question. Um, it's very common. In fact, it's more common than most people think it is. About one in five to seven new moms mm. report that something's not right. And um, it doesn't mean that they're um, uh, necessarily diagnosed, but they realize that something's just different and um, in a lot of various different ways. So 15 to 20% of moms. Dads can also experience some postpartum depression. So I don't wanna eliminate that possibility because that is true as well. Um, so why does it occur? Uh, well, number one, I think the thing we think about with new moms is these extreme hormone changes that happen after a baby's born. Yeah. They plummet down to subnormal levels and they take a while to get back up to normal and reset. So hormone levels can um, certainly contribute. Also with COVID-19, this year has been horrendous for new moms in many, many ways. You know, it's led to a lot of isolation and a lot of um, lack of perceived support because with social distancing, you know, we don't have that village around us this past year, helping yeah. us every day with the baby or the other children in the household. So um, it has really led to that loneliness and that isolation for new moms. So it's a whole new concept to have a baby during COVID-19. Yeah, so talk a little bit about how it presents itself. Cause I know it can be, you know, sort of minimal but it can also really be impairing, right? Exactly. So it can start as like baby blues in the first couple of weeks. And, and some of that is extremely normal, you know, kind of having, you know, a bad moment or, you know, just kind of a melancholy uh, moment. And then you're kind of back to normal again. So kind of a, a little bit of up and down. And sometimes that's all there is to it. And that's what we call baby blues. But if it persists, longer than that two to three weeks and it's just not going away and perhaps it's worsening each day then it's probably something that needs to be addressed um, can happen anytime in the first year after baby's born so sometimes moms are fine for weeks and months and all of a sudden um, about you know month eight or down the road wow. you know she can experience symptoms so um, the symptoms are not only what we think of when we talk about postpartum depression is depression, melancholy, kind of feeling blue and down and sad. Anxiety is another um, component of this that especially this past year with COVID-19, we've seen a lot more anxiety and worrisome and, and fear and that sort of thing. Um, another way it presents is with irritability and anger and um, just kind of lashing out. So um, it presents different ways. And so that's what makes it a bit confusing to, to pinpoint and identify. Because when people say postpartum depression, but you're having other symptoms other than depression, you're thinking, well, what is this that I'm going through? So it's really hard to identify. Uh, so that must make it challenging to treat. Talk a little bit about treatment options. Well, number one is good support. You know, she needs all the social support and family support. You know, um, it's just really critical. Um, we've had, we have free support groups in Grand Rapids. Um, I do one on Tuesdays at seven o'clock. Um, other treatment is, is talking with a professional counselor that is trained in this area. Well, Medication can be helpful as well. So we wanna make sure that women are connecting with their providers, their OB, their primary care physician, their midwife, and talking about that option too. 
Okay, very good. Well, for more information, folks, visit the Spectrum Health website. And you can find a link at 13onyourside.com. Nancy, good to see you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me today. Mm -hmm.